I just want to say, nah, they did not all make out with the vending machine at the end of the season, did they? They did! No! I hate it. Oh my god, the girl falls in love with the vending machine? I can't. Okay, F. Morning, baby. Does that feel good? We are now at the end of the summer 2023 anime season and boy was that a hot summer for anime. So we are back again to give our final rankings for all of the shows that we have watched. We did rank all of the shows at the beginning of the season so we'll see how they stacked up against our initial thoughts. Mm, we do have a couple new ones, a few that we dropped. Mm -hmm. Let's jump into it. We'll just take the ones we dropped off of our list right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, we dropped. The girl I like forgot her glasses. Sorry. We tried sticking with it. It, yeah. didn't, it just didn't, it it just didn't, didn't work out for us this time. <laughs> yeah. You're gone. And we also dropped Liar Liar. You're gone. We also have a third one we dropped, which is The Devil's a Part-Timer, oh. <laughs> Part 2, Part 2. Yeah, to be fair, I don't think we truly wanted to start that one to begin with. Starting off with Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Jujutsu Kaisen's second season started off with its first of two cores taking place approximately 10 years prior to the events of Season 1. Jujutsu High sorcerers Gojo and Geto are assigned to protect a girl named Riko Amanai, who is the vessel for Jujutsu High's Master Tengen. They face off against two enemy groups with a deadly bounty on Riko's head. As they're assigned to keep her safe, they encounter a formidable foe and the father of Season 1's Megami Fushiguro, Toji Zenin. Spoiler, Riko was killed by Toji, leading to a gruesome battle that nearly kills Gojo. Core 1 shows Gato's descent into darkness and doubt, and Gojo completely losing it in the most amazingly scary way possible as he perfects his powers. Core 2 picks up as new Gato, and the gang of batteries attack Shibuya, and an all-hands-on-deck battle leaves Gojo sealed. Question mark? Gojo's death and then Gato's fall into despair was a lot better than I expected mm -hmm. it would be. Like it like blew me away. Yeah. I knew what was gonna happen because I had read I had read the manga up to that point. Like the scene with Gato in the shower and he looks really emaciated. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god. It's hitting him hard. It's hitting him hard. I also feel like I've had moments like that <laughs> where I've just been like crying in the shower and you I'm don't like, know damn. why you're doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, damn, that I feel that. I love Jujutsu Kaisen. I love how brutal it is in killing off people. They kill off yes. Rico, Junpei style, just like a rag doll, just tossing over to the side. Mm -hmm. There's that meme going around of like the horse drawing because everything mm. is like Jujutsu Kaisen Zero <laughs> yeah. takes place then, season two starts off there. But I feel like the way that they're doing all of this makes sense, setting up everything and getting you connected to the right people at the right times. Do you think that though, Gojo like, dying at the hands of Toji would have been more impactful if we would have seen that first? No, because I didn't love core one Gojo oh, as much as I love season okay. one Gojo. Oh, so okay. It was more effective. I feel that, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. So we had it between A and S at the start of the season and I'm going to keep my A ranking. I'm gonna keep my S ranking. Like, I feel like the Shibuya incident is mm -hmm. gonna be really good, so oh. I don't wanna put it at like- Pretty serious. S immediately, fair, like I feel fair. like it's gonna go up. So I'll, I'll, I'd be happy to keep it at in between A and S. Next up, we have Mashoko Tensei Season 2. Now split up from his teammates from Season 1, Riz Redrat finds himself at the Renoa Magic Academy trying to find out more information about the teleport incident and giant mana explosion. There he reunites with Sylviette, now in the employ of Princess Ariel as her personal bodyguard under the alias Fitz. He battles Bodyguardi, the fiancé to the best character, Kishirika Kishirisu, meets someone else from his previous world, shows off his crazy magic abilities, gets a slave girl, gets an apprentice, and spends most of the first part of the season trying to cure his ED. I think this sums it up really well that the biggest villain of season two was Rudy's erectile dysfunction. <laughs> That's how exciting season two was. Okay, it's still a good show and I'm still really enjoying this journey. I hate that it's kind of come to a screeching halt though. Season one was a lot better mm -hmm. than season two, in my opinion. We know that Rudy can be a, a bit of a perv, a mm -hmm. big of a perv. Mm -hmm. And I can handle the pervy stuff as long as there's something else going on right. and that's like can grab my attention. Mm -hmm. Like the story, season one story was amazing. But season two with Rudy going around groping girls. Just to see if his wiener works. And I was just like, okay, that along with the story that was like meh and mm -hmm. it wasn't really moving forward. I just didn't like that combination. Right. So season two was a little bit of a letdown. 
Plus, Sylph is like so boring. Sylph is really boring. So boring. I feel so bad for Eris. Like, yeah, I I like Eris so much better, and I'm just like Rudy does not give a fuck about his mother. Right. In this season, even though like the whole point of the ending of season two mm -hmm. was he got out of bed and moved forward so he could save his mother, right. but then all of a sudden he's just like ah, fuck it. my erectile dysfunction is more. Important. Right. And <laughs> like even what? the the man god was like go to the school and you'll learn about your mom's whereabouts kind of thing. Season two ended with, you know, him going to get married to self. Spoiler. So it's 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 not necessarily moving in a direction that I'm super liking. Mm -mm. Uh, but, you know, it seemed like a lot of people really liked uh, Rudy having erectile dysfunction. So yeah. there's that, at least. We ranked it an A last mm -hmm. time. I'm mm -hmm. going to give it a B. I'm giving it a B. Yeah. I, it fell a little bit for me because of all of the things we just said. Next up, we have My Happy Marriage. Welcome to the sad life of Mio Samori, the neglected and abused first daughter of the Samori household. Taking place during the Meiji Restoration era, we get a glimpse of an alternate universe Japan where family lineage is intertwined with powerful supernatural abilities. After years of mistreatment by her father, stepmom and stepsister, Mio is married off to the cold and stoic Kyoka Kudo, the influential, wealthy, and powerful commander of this special anti-grotesquery unit. True love and magical powers blossom in the surprise of the summer season. I was way more invested than I thought I would be. Yes. <laughs> oh, you. I was I was so looking forward to watching this every single week. Yeah, it was good. It was, it, you got a romance. Mm -hmm. You got a cool setting. Mm -hmm. You have magic. You have beautiful animation. What more could you ask for? You got for? handsome boy Summer Kudo-san. The monsters looked mm -hmm. a little silly. They looked very out of place. Yeah, they were a little, I mean, I thought they were kind of scary, but. Wait, they looked goofy to me. I was like, everything looks so beautiful, yeah. and then you have these like weird mud mummies, monsters. Mummy <laughs> yeah, mud monsters. I, I was just like, that doesn't seem. But whatever, that's okay. There is a season two, or there will be a season two. So maybe we'll finally get to see a my happy marriage instead of mm. a my sad engagement. Oh yeah, because I haven't gotten married yet. Yeah, so it's not about happy marriage. Yeah. We ranked this at in between a B and a C last time. Mm -mm. I'd give it a B. Really? I was gonna give it an A. Okay, in between A and B then. Hi. Next up, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Part 2. Bleach is back, baby! Thousand Year Blood War Part 2 continues right where we left off with substitute Soul Reaper Ichigo Kurosaki, now gaining the power of two Zanpak Toes while learning about his true lineage. Yuabaha and the Stern Ritter attack the Soul Society again, and with captains fighting for their lives, the true battle is about to start as the Quincy's enter the Soul King Palace. Such a good season. This season was very cool. Mm -hmm. The first season or the first part, I think was a little bit more balanced with like story development. Mm -hmm. We had fighting, mm -hmm. we had a bunch of sad scenes, like a lot of people died. While this was like solely focused on the battles mm -hmm. in classic Bleach style. Right. I'm not mad about it because no. it was very cool. And very pretty. Finally, our girl Rukia, our boy Renji get victories mm -hmm. for the first time <laughs> in what 20 years yeah, good for them that. yeah, yeah. And all of everybody's new power-ups is so cool looking. so cool yeah i feel like i've been living my entire life just to witness rukia mm -hmm. finally not be useless good for you good yeah for you. it's kind of funny because ichigo was like barely in this season that's true yeah <laughs> right? even yeah. in the last few episodes he's just sitting in a tube like that didn't really bother me no no i love my boy but the show is turning into you a bleacha. Ooh, instead of bleachigo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like Is that, that. The, the true protagonist all along? Absolutely. At the start of this season, we had it at an S ranking, and I am confident to keep it right yeah, where it is. It'll be an S, yeah. Next up, we have the masterful cat is depressed again today. Saku is your typical workaholic who happened to take in a stray black kitten, Yukichi. But when Yukichi started growing, it seemed like he would never stop. Now, he's the size of a bear and takes pride in his culinary skills and domestic chores. With a cat like that, it's hard to tell who's looking after who. Regardless, they share a special bond that's both amusing and heartwarming. Still the best show of the entire season, and and I still hope to be Yukichi when I grow up. This show has something for everyone. It has comedy. It has pro DIY tips. It has action. It has idol groups. It has romance. It has the monotony and reality of corporate life. It has something for everyone and everyone needs to watch the show. I have literally nothing bad to say about this show. Because it, it was just so good. Mm -hmm. And I do not like Slice of Life, but this was just so great. Again, it's not necessarily Slice of Life. It is okay, action, yeah. comedy, romance. Vinny just found his number one one favorite anime of all time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh wow, really? Uh-huh, one that isn't serious? Girl Assassins, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Well, I mean, kind of, actually. That scene in the car? How would that be? Okay. Uh, would everything end better, though, if Yukichi was just a man in a cat suit? I, I, would, you, would that ruin it for you? No, I, would, I wouldn't be mad about that. This sounds horrible, but I feel like I would be happier if that was the case because I could feel like, oh, this is an you achievable dream. You could do dream. that? That's yeah. gross. Ew, you want to dress as a cat and trick some poor woman? Anyway, where did we have this at the start of the season? It was an A. I'm going to keep this at an S tier for my ranking. I'll keep it. I was going to give it an A, but I don't think we're going to rank it alongside you just in case. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine. fine. We'll rank it in between A and S. Hell yes. I'll give this one to you. <laughs> Next up, we have ZOM 100 Zombie List of the Dead. 24-year-old Akira Tendo finds himself locked in the monotonous grasp of exploitative office life. The once bright and ambitious young man has lost his drive and enthusiasm disillusioned with the unfulfilling work. However, fate takes an unexpected turn when a horrifying zombie apocalypse descends upon Tokyo, transforming ordinary people into mindless, flesh-hungry beings. Suddenly, Akira's world is flipped upside down, and he confidently confronts this harrowing chaos as his world is now colorful and full of endless possibilities. He decides to now live his life to the fullest and creates his ZOM 100 bucket list of the dead. I think this is gonna be slightly above average for me. Yeah? Yeah. It was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. it's entertaining, but it's not necessarily anything new in my opinion. Like, it seems like it's a very classic shonen type. I know it's a seinen, mm -hmm. but like, it feels shonen to me. Right. I want to see like a really scary <sighs> zombie anime, but this was one of those shows where it's like, you know, everything's gonna be fine in the end. Right. So like, I don't think the stakes were really there. <laughs> like the first episode set the bar really high but I don't think the rest of the season lived up to that. At the start of the season, we had this at an A ranking. I kind of want to drop this down to a B. I give it a B. Yeah, like B horror film. B for Bombies. What? B Bombies. Bambi. Oh, too soon. Next up, we have Rent a Girlfriend season three. Why are we still watching this show? Season three picks up where season two left off as Kazuya and Mizuhara embark on making a movie together to appease Mizuhara's dying grandmother's wish of seeing her star in a movie. Kazuya's real girlfriend is unsurprisingly not stoked about it and Kazuya somehow adds another girl to his gross harem as a new neighbor and streamer, Miniye Mori, moves in next door. The absolute worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. Yes. Grandma Sari is about to die. Mm -hmm. She dies. She dies. Finally, after four seasons, she finally dies. I was like, you sound happy about that. And the most important mm -hmm. thing Kazuya wants Chizuru to tell her is that they aren't actually dating. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure what? her last moments can be better spent talking about and doing something else. And then to top it off, he books a date with Chizuru after her grandmother died because he was trying to do something for her and his idea was to pay her to go on a date with him. I just cannot comprehend how this guy doesn't act like a normal human being and like be like, she is your fucking friend mm -hmm. at this point, my dude. Why don't you just comfort her like a fucking normal person? Right. Are you gonna continue watching this? Okay, so that's the thing. He's going to continue doing creepy things. I don't think there's any like redemption arc that's coming up, but yes, I am excited for the next what? season. What, you are? And well, like, no. it's, it's like a train wreck. You just can't look away. It seems like it's dragging. They it's, could they yeah. could they could have wrapped it up this season. They could have one hundred percent wrapped it up this like season. Like one right? of them moves away. I'm pretty sure the manga is still going I think too. So, yeah. But yeah, I am still gonna keep watching this anime. I'm gonna give it a G. So that's not on the list. I'm giving it a G for girlfriend. I'm gonna give it a C for can you not be a creep? So an E? We, wait, we there doesn't have a G. <laughs> Fine, E. For everybody in the show is awful. Speaking of dying things, moving on to Dark Gathering. College freshman Keitaro despises ghosts yet strangely attracts them. A past incident left him socially withdrawn until his childhood friend Aiko helps him to rejoin society. To aid in his rehabilitation, Keitaro takes on a part-time job as a student for Aiko's cousin, Yayoi. 
The catch is that Yayoi, a child prodigy, also shares a spiritual connection to the supernatural, and she seeks encounters with spirits to build an army of super strong spirits to eventually confront the one that stole away her mother. As they venture into spooky haunted spots, Keitaro's tutoring job gets sidelined by their ghostly escapades. The perfect anime for spooky season. It genuinely freaked me out a bit. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. at how scared I was. Like, we'll watch at night and I'll like go to the bathroom and be like, oh, I'm gonna leave the lights on because I'm kind of scared now. Yeah, and like, because the animation style is very cutesy. Mm -hmm. It's very different. And, but it still managed to make me worry a little bit about my own health and safety. Yes. Yaoi wins the award for being the most potato this year. The I think, most potato. I think we can give that to her. Absolutely. There's nothing more I like to see than a potato princess fighting an old sutra chanting priest demon who is chanting her to hell, and Yaoi shoving her hand down Keitaro's throat to save them while he only has seconds to seal him in chains. <laughs> Just a wild ride, but it was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, it is kind of like formulaic, like they go to a place, they encounter a spirit, they are having some trouble, but then they succeed, but. But it works because all the spirits are so different mm -hmm. and you don't know what horror, what horrifying creature is gonna start ripping out spines yeah. out of people, like, right. yeah. And slicing people's throats and <laughs> yeah. my worst fear, the elevator scene, where you go mm. down and you see them, you go down and, yeah. Mm, I hate elevators. So we had to set between A and S. I want to keep it at an S tier for me. It is a solid, solid show and such a sleeper anime. I give it an A. It was very good. Mm -hmm. One of the best of the season. So I, we'll keep it at, in between A and S. And luckily still going right into spooky season. Oh, that was really good. The second season to one of 2021's most underrated shows is back. This Chinese Donghua reunites us with Lu Guang, Chen Zhaoxi, Zhao Ling, and a panoply of baddies as our heroes use photographs and their abilities to jump into said photographs to try to stop a serial killer. The hunt for red eyes is even more action packed this season. So much action this season. Yeah, yep, here we go. This is the only one that's uh, on this list that's in my top five anime I'm of dead. all time. Link Click is so good. Season two was great. Not as great as season one, mm -hmm. I would say, but that's a really hard bar to reach because season one was like beautiful, right? but it's still close mm -hmm. to peak in my opinion. Some of the things I didn't necessarily like, there was a lot of recapping and replaying of scenes and things, which is like fine, but it, drags things on mm -hmm. a little bit more. The fight scenes were very well animated and very cool, but those also it dragged so on a, a little bit longer than I thought that they needed to. Because I was like, give me more information. Mm -hmm. Like stop sh that. showing me the what? same right. things. Like I that. need more. I feel like it's gonna come back in an even bigger way for season three. Like I feel like season one grabbed your attention, right. caught you, and then season two was like, building out a little bit mm -hmm, more for mm -hmm. season three to right. really like swing it home. Yeah. 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 And I'm only diving into criticisms of this one because like I truly care about this anime. Like I'm not gonna sit here and criticize the masterful cat, right? Like <laughs> No one can. Like at the end of the day I don't compared to Link Click, I don't really care about mm -hmm. Masterful Cat. Um, it was so good mm -hmm. and I love it so much. I'm keeping this at an S tier. I'm going to keep this at an S tier, even though for me, like the small, deep, intimate stories that like the small nuanced ones mm. that were from season one weren't there and we we're just focusing on like the broader story, but it was still fantastic. And I love that Zhao Ling fights and everybody's so cool. Oh my gosh, if Zhao Ling now has powers, ugh. ugh. Yeah, I'm so glad Zhao Ling was like more involved mm -hmm. in everything this, yeah. this season. She's my rock. <laughs> They're my power trio. Next up, we've got a new one for our list. We started this one a little bit late in the season. Undead Murder Farce. In an alternate universe Meiji era Japan, we meet up with an experimental half-oni known as the Oni Slayer, Suguru, as he teams up with the immortal Aya Rindo, who's now just ahead after her body was stolen, and Aya's devoted servant, Shizuku Hase. Leaving Japan for Europe, they embark on a journey to locate Aya's missing body and confront their mysterious foe. Along the way, Suguru assumes the persona of the cage user as he carries Aya's head in a birdcage, tackling supernatural enigmas across Europe including vampires and werewolves and Frankenstein and a Sherlock Holmes and more. It was all around an intriguing watch, really fun, likable characters, cool character design. Very cool character yeah, design. Yeah, we love a good mystery. A talking head, werewolves, Sherlock Holmes, Frankenstein, vampires, the Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> murders, undead girl, and farces. Many farces. I like I like 
collaborations where you get a bunch of different characters like, oh, I know that person. Yeah, <laughs> I do. And a quick note for anybody who's gonna be like, it's actually Frankenstein's monster. This was Frankenstein. This was Victor Frankenstein. They called him Victor. I don't think anybody <laughs> to... It's not Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein's monster. Uh, I'd watch a season two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna give this one an A. I'll give it a B. B, okay. Yeah, in between A and B. And for our last few, we're just gonna quickly run through them. Starting off with Reborn as a vending machine, I now wander the dungeon. Uh, at the start of the season, we had this at a B. Uh, I am dropping this one down to a C. F. F. Okay, originally I ranked it as an S. It was horrible. It was pretty bad. I just want to say, nah, they did not all make out with the vending machine at the end of the season, did they? They did. No, <laughs> I hate it. Oh my God, the girl falls in love with the vending machine. I can't. Okay, <laughs> F. Okay, I wanted to say that this was my guilty pleasure of the season, but it, it got horrible. so old and so dumb and so boring, and it feels like it was written <laughs> like a collaborative team project by a bunch of rushed fourth graders. <laughs> Okay, it was like, it was like, oh, what's that monster called? Oh, it's the demon skeleton man. <laughs> like, and uh, Dr. Bear. And, <laughs> Just uh, anyway. what? Okay, okay. F, is that what we're doing? Uh, e. In between E and F. In between E and F. And finally, wrapping up the summer 2023 season, we've got Gene of AI. Uh, at the start of the season, we gave this a B. I, I gotta drop this one down to a C. Oh, uh, I was gonna keep it at a B. It was okay, it was a little boring right. sometimes. In between B and C. Yeah, for me it yeah. was like when you present an actual story and then not touch on it from the first episode until the last episode, you lose me just a little bit. All right, so a lot moved down, mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. few things moved up. Right, yeah, but uh, all together a solid season. Let us know your final thoughts of the season, and we're so excited to start the fall with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching Let's Watch Some Anime. For Let's Watch Some Anime, I'm Vinny. I'm Molly. See you in the next one. Goodbye.